Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, but today I'm going to show you how you can paint this monarch butterfly on this gorgeous red and orange flower. This is really a lot of fun, easier than you might think. I'm going to explain it step by step to help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He makes sure that the camera's pointing at everything that I'm demonstrating and techniques that I'm doing. He also makes sure to kind of, you know, help me stay on track and remember to talk about what's going on. So you will hear him throughout the video. This is part of a really cool series called Acrylic April, which is a free daily painting challenge I do with my community. So we are on day whatever number that you see in the title. <laughs> So, you know, try to keep in mind, this is like daily in a row. We're doing these paintings together. Maybe you came just to do this because this painting spoke to your heart. Maybe you're here as part of the art journey. Either way, I am so glad to have you. And I promise I can show you how to paint this. Be sure to get your free resources, your traceable, your written out instructions, mini book, your step-by-step -step infographic. Check those timestamps because you can find your chapter again on the video. So many things. And those things will help you have a great time. So there's really nothing to do but for you to get your paint and your brushes and come back and meet me at the easel right now because together we're going to paint this. On the surface, I have an eight by eight canvas. This is the size I do in April. I have the wish and intention for you guys at home. I like to put these on my canvas, watercolor pencil, that you have the heart and strength for the road in front of you. I know I've been getting many wishes kind of that are covered under that umbrella. And I just want you to know that you will be enough in the road and I wish that for you. So you know where stuff is on my palette, even though we tell you the colors at the beginning, I just want, want you to know where it is. Quinacridone magenta, cad red, cad yellow, phthalo green, phthalo blue, Mars black, docks purple, and titanium white. Those are the colors we're doing today. And John, we're going to begin with a one inch mop. This is the Princeton Select one inch mop. Any one inch mop will work. I like synthetic, but here's what, guys. You could just use another brush. Yeah. Number one thing you can be doing as a new artist is getting to know your tools and you should spend time every week pulling out your brushes and your paints seeing what techniques they can do that way you only buy the things that you need <laughs> i'm Why going to just take a little blue and white huh you're mixing some stuff there yeah i'm taking a little blue and a little white together and i'm going to put up a nice kind of sky blue background now you just pulled from the edge of the paint I do that. I get asked about that. That's my paint management. So what's happening here is I don't go in the middle. I don't work large amounts of paint. I create what's called a landing strip, which has other meanings, I know. And <laughs> huh. but that's not what I mean here. I'm going to miss my canvas because it's a dry day. Sometimes it happens. You ever, you know, you have a dry day? I do. I have dry days. And you'll notice that immediately that's just water. That's not a blending medium. There used to be this really great spray blending medium, but it was also terrible because it would dry in the bottle. Mm. So when you could get it out, fantastic. But when you couldn't get it out, it was the meanest. Now, I can only do this because the particular spray bottle that I have does not do big water droplets, which would ruin this process. It's a micro mister. It is a micro mister. And so it's just going to let me kind of get a nice smooth blended application i'm going to go ahead and get a little more blue a few places you're going to see me putting it through here i'm going to show cool things so see how it's also wet i do that's actually part of how this is going to work and then i can come in now i can use the same brush and if i you know kind of wipe it off and i'm very careful with it get an effect but if you want to see something pretty cool and amazing <laughs> I always want to see something pretty cool. Right? If I take a clean version of this brush and come through, I can create such a soft blend you can't believe. Double brushed it. So I can double brush it. I can do it with, the, with a damp clean one, but it works best with a dry one. This is a true, true brush method. You don't have to have two brushes. This just works really, really well. And then if it stops blending, I can take my mister and just missed the dry brush and get the rest of the blend. So sometimes in acrylic April, I like to show you these extra little techniques. 
She can be like, oh, how is she doing that? Well, that's how. And so now I've got kind of a little distancey sky kind of thing happening here. I think back you with some received, weight. Hmm? I think you receive cosmic powers through the poof on your head. Through the poof on my head? The poof on my head is doing me? You can receive the cosmic rays. So if until this moment in your life, you didn't have a poof on your head, and so you weren't receiving information from the universe that you could mist your brush as an alternate way to apply water to it, I'm so glad to be able to help you now. You're a channel for the cosmic rays. I am. Look at this cool effect. I love getting cool effects. And so things are a technique when you can duplicate them. That's when you know you have a technique is you can do it over. <laughs> No, no, no. That's a technique I learned. It is. It, it, everything's an accident until you can repeat it, and then it is a technique. I can repeat my socks on the floor every day. I have a sock technique. Yeah, you really do. All right. We're going to dry this and come back and do the next step. Now, in this, I'm going to show you another cool thing. I'm going to take a product called Glazing Liquid. This is actually every other product that's called Glazing Liquid is different than this. Just so you know, it's only this company, this one. Glazing Liquid by Golden Artist Colors slows down the drying time of your paint, extends your paint, and allows you uh, better brushability. Oh, that was a little bit of a cough. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. So I'm loading the glazing liquid up into my brush and I'm adding some like distant little floofy clouds. Isn't that cool? That is a a floofy. You can get into some blue if you want, but you do want to have the glazing medium going. And that two layer method really gives you an effect that you might normally think of for oils, but you absolutely can do in acrylics. And that's it's important to know what you can do. It's a combination of those layers that creates the effect. It's the layers, and sometimes it's the glazing is also super helpful. You can kind of see that, again, softens that out, doesn't it? Yeah. One of the things I'll say as an active spectator. And you are an active spectator. Is that uh, sometimes Cinnamon here shows you guys some techniques that aren't fully captured in video. And what I mean by that is that this particular blended effect Oh, it isn't showing? Oh, it does. It absolutely oh. does. But video can't capture the subtleties that this provides. Um, so I would say that definitely it's worth trying going ahead and doing the dry and then wet version of this technique because it yields a different result than you would think. It really does. And again, this is just rich. And when you get up on this canvas, it has a look. People will go, is that an oil? You know, and you'll be like, no, it's an acrylic. And they'll be like, no, it's not. And you're like, yeah, it is. I can do all those techniques with my acrylics. My acrylic is the most transformative of all paints. Now let's dry this thoroughly. And I'm going to show you the next step. So here we are. I'm using a Filbert now. This is a rounded brush. It's a number eight by Simply Simmons. Guys, I'm picking this because it has a nice edge. You could do any brush that gives you a good sharp line. You don't have to do this brush. I try to use a set number of brushes every acrylic April, but you use what you have in your box. I'm taking my Mars Black to my Cad Red, and I'm getting a nice kind of dark brown. I'm going to come here. Kind of marking here, like say three fingers over from the left, and I'm going to bring a little line up. Sometimes I have to get a little more fluid on it so it flows off the brush well. About how much? Uh, water? I'm not exactly sure even how to quantify that. Just enough, but that seems like a terrible thing to say to a new student. <laughs> so just enough. And. And where do you find that just enough to be like where it flows? It's in the Goldilocks zone that we like to talk about where you stop working so hard to get the result in the technique you're attempting. Um, in my acrylic, it's generally one to two drops of water. Some acrylic is very water sensitive. So it's like 
you don't even need to do this. And other acrylic is so thirsty, you're going to be like feeling like you're dumping like half a gallon in there. So I'm just trying to get a nice little stem. That looks pretty good. It's maybe not the perfect brush for me here because I feel like the stem needed a little more control. So I'm going to switch over, interestingly enough, to my monogram liner. This is a nice length out from the Feral Synthetic Brush. It's the number one Princeton Select liner. I'm going to load it up with my little black paint. And you can see I did, I also thinned it there, didn't I? Yeah. And I'm going to come over here and thin it here. So it does have a nice amount. And I'll know it's kind of thinned correctly when it look. it's not watery by any means, but it's more fluid, more high flow. And I'm going to bring little lines out. So many little lines. Right. Now we don't see every little line here. But we see many of them. Me too. Yeah, there's little sticky sticks. Little kind of buds that are coming out. And you got to kind of get those going. And you want to kind of break them up and make sure that they're rounded. Little bits of interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. I was fine all day. Huh. Speaking just fine all day. Go to film a video. Not speaking fine. All right, I'm just cleaning up the line of that. We don't really, we're going to come down just a little bit here. And then we may come back. You'll notice that I let them cross lines just to give them that more mm. realistic kind of feel to them. Now I'm going to take a little of my green and yellow together. I'm going to get my red into it. That seems like a strange thing, but that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make sort of this greened out little blend into these little stems. And that is just the transition to the uh, green that we're going to have on the chlorophyll part of it. Yeah. Back into the green. Red to green. And I'm also going to kind of come up here on the stem with a little bit of that green glaze over everything. Mm. So it's just a weird little touch of stringly bits. They're fun things. Now, last step on this. Look at this. I'm going to take my number four round Simply Simmons. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little more red into my brush and I'm gonna come here and make a little bulb now I may find that I want more bulbs as I go so I'll have to add more stems and that's okay When they're up towards the top, these are a little bit smaller. And then as they go down, they'll be a little bit bigger. Oh. What do you think of that? Hey, that's great. Kind of fun, isn't it? Just putting little downward strokes on them. And then I can even go back into my green again, if you'll remember, and my lovely green. And 
Doesn't that create some nice little variants? So, yeah, you know, it's almost like a very complicated little bit with the stems, but... There we are, making all that little transition. So yeah. sometimes when you'll see something, you'll say, oh, that's so complicated, but really it's just... Just knowing the steps and looking at what is what makes this flower this flower. Like kind of actually a tree, but it's a flowering tree, so it counts. Huh. All right. That is pretty good. I think so. We've got a very nice step there. Did a Thanks. lot of stuff. We used a couple of brushes. But we got a lot done. So just in case you're running in, that was the Simply Simmons number eight filbert, the number four round on Simply Simmons, and the number one monogram liner. It's more important the shape of the brush, the size of the brush, and the fact that it's synthetic filament than it is these brands. Um, but I'll always tell you what I'm using so that you can get exactly that if you want to for at home. All right, when we come back, I'm going to show you the next part of this lesson. So we're going to continue on. I'm using my number four round from Simply Simmons again, and I'm going to get a little bright red on here. This is just the pure CAD red. And I'm going to make sure that I pop a little bit of that on a little bit of my little little spikes up here so that they're that they're bright, you know? So they pop a little bit. Yeah. Little touches. Doesn't have to be a big thing, but sometimes it's nice. And I do kind of focus them on the top side, so it implies a little bit of light and shadow. You know, that way, this side is sort of under shadow and the bottom is under shadow here. And not all of them, because they can be in shadow too, but you can see that that kind of, that pulls them out from the canvas. Under shadow. <laughs> Hanging down on me. All right, so this is a number eight filbert. <laughs> don't worry, we teach art here, we don't say, I mean, I sing, but not well, and we just do it recreationally. Um, number A, Philbert, here from Simply Simmons, and I'm going to continue on making these little blooms. I'm going to load up a little yellow into my brush. might even get some uh, glazing medium into this, just so that it's fluid. I don't want to thin it or make it transparent, but I do want to make it where it'll flow off my brush easily. You could use water as well. And I'm going to come here and pull down a little swirl in this yellow red. So it's yellow with some red. And you kind of see it's two little commas curved one way and another little comma curved the opposing way. And that kind of forms the outward petals. And I can bring a couple more commas in. And that's how we're going to get that little flower shape, that overall shape. And I might get a little more red into it. And I'll go ahead and add some little four petals that are kind of facing us. Yeah. So they don't have as much. And I can always come along the top of this flower with a little darker red. And that gives it a little personality. Because some of these will have to have some personality. I think it gives it a lot of personality. Need some personality. I can always come in and get some magenta in Cad Red. And you can see that deepens that red. And most of these flowers will be comma strokes, right? Now we're going to put some sort of behind, and the trick to this is we'll have to put the stem back over the flowers. I'm going to get a little of my brighter yellow over here, so I can kind of alternate between my darker yellow and my brighter yellow. Orange, red, those colors. Yep. I'm having a week. It's okay. I teach art here all week. <laughs> and this is acrylic April. So that statement is more so, of a statement than usual. So you're, you, you're here all month. I'm here all month every day. All month. Every day. And then I'm also here a lot after that. I, I'm a little worried y'all are tired of seeing me so much. Nah. All right. I'm going to come on the edge of the brush and sort of curl in. And these flowers really come together 
by just capturing that general flower shape and it's the way the structure builds out that makes us feel like we're seeing something. Just pulling it down. Let me come here and get a little dark too. I like going through the through the range of the colors. Down here might come out a little bit. Little kind of open columns. Just pulling them in. If I need to get a little better flow, I can go into water or my glaze. And this is just that first start. I'm just building the structure. I'm a little excited to be doing this. Mm -hmm. All right, and now I've got to kind of fill out over here. Some bottom spaces. Yeah, and these flowers, you know, you want them to face a few different directions. So sometimes I will kind of push some down, push them up. Nature does variance, right? Nature loves to give you variety. So you can see I'll come in and do a couple light strokes and a couple dark strokes and alternate up how that goes. Maybe a little more in the yellow here. It's looking pretty good. Sometimes I rinse out because my brush is getting quite a load on it and it just gets to be uh, gummy and I, and I don't want it to be gummy. No. I don't want it to be a gummy. A gummy brush, making those little curves. I'm gonna get some yellow. Kind of crowding in some flowers here. And then I may come in, use my brush stroke. See how my brush stroke layers the flowers on top of each other. So I can get a lot of density going just losing layers and if I want to push a flower forward well I'll just put a petal over that that's how I'm going to get in there and get out you know and I'm just trying to create a nice cascade I know that I'm going to bring some petals you know behind and in front and that'll be about bringing that stem through again. Oh, that's looking really good. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I have painted this particular flower. I'm not even sure what it is, but you know what? You guys have been my head botanist so much this acrylic April. I know what kind of flower it is. Huh? It's a red one. Yes, it is. That's. It is definitively and for sure red. So I got. I also know it's a pretty one. It is definitely pretty. I, I really am liking it. And I'm just trying to make sure that I've got, you know, some variants. I feel like. But the question is, would a rose by any other name smell as sweet? Roses don't smell. Shh. I'm just saying. I'm just saying I went through a very dark time of my life. More than once. But during a very dark time of my life. I checked out a book about roses huh. from the library. They got a smell. Very few. Very huh. few. Most roses, it's it's more uh, heritage roses and older roses. So a smell in a rose is like, huh. you know. It's not like a smelly, smelly thing. It's not a guaranteed thing. Right? What's so, the one that we have that I like the smell of? Oh, jasmine. No, the big one at the front of the driveway. Lilacs. Lilacs. We have jasmine, we have lilacs. Jasmine so yes, lilacs. before everyone comes in and goes, roses smell. Some roses smell, but some roses don't smell. And uh, so they don't all smell as sweet. They don't all smell as sweet, is my all point. Right. Some roses smell as sweet, but not every rose smells as, smells as sweet. And sometimes you'll get a rose and you'll go to sniff it and you're like, there's no, there's no rose scent there. It's just thorny. It's just thorny. Anyways, I read this rose book. Which somehow gave me the strength to this get apparently through. apparently has no thorns. Maybe it does. But Some roses are thornier than other roses. 
We're not talking about roses. We're, we're not. About we're talking about whatever bend. this is. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. That was a very strange side bend. That was fun. I accept your comments in the comments below based on that. Let's try this and continue on. See where it goes. So in this, I want to add a monarch butterfly and have kind of a cool trick for a monarch butterfly. So I'm going to get my black paint to start out. And you're like, black paint? What? I don't like to freehand or sketch in with black paint. And I understand that. I used to feel that same way. So if you're there right now, you can draw this out with the traceable or use chalk to put it in. But I'm going to go ahead and go black paint. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make a little round spot. This is its really unusual kind of monarch little body. And you know what? Sometimes I call these monarchs, but they're actually a different butterfly. But I didn't get a book about that during that dark time. So we teach about, about painting, not about flowers. I and made notes. I had a notebook about rose things. It was a very strange time. Ah, sometimes you just have to have a distraction. And hopefully I'm that for you right now. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to arc a wing up. And then it comes back into like a little bit of a, almost like a little dragonfly shape wing, but we're just using that to help guide us in our monarch wing, right? When we go to join it up. Now, the other wing is actually, believe it or not, as far out as this wing. And I'm gonna curve that and pull that in, pull this in. And then I join them, and that's how you get that sort of distinctive oh. shape. Or how I do. It's a way I do it. And you go, you go oh, great. It's a big black bob. Thank it's you. It's another way. <laughs> it's another way. It's a big black bob. And I'm going to try to get, you know, fairly well covered. I can dry this with a hairdryer right now. Or... I can give it a minute to dry on its own and get some of the other work done on the butterfly that I have to get done, which is I'm going to come in with my number one liner by my uh, Princeton Select, and I'm going to make some little antennae. And coming up. Also, I'm going to give my place for my butterfly to be like, kind of maybe hanging on to some things. See? It's got, it's got a grip. Got little <laughs> leggy legs. Got a little grip. And that's okay, because sometimes they, they need a little grip on something. So you give them a little grip that you can see. Now, I really uh, still need him to dry. And while it's drying, if I want to, I can take this moment and kind of play with my flower that he's on. So I'm going to get my number four round, simply some as I'm going to come here and just sort of do a nice little second coat. And then get into my red here. And you can see that does do a nice little job of creating that second little base on the flower. Maybe a little right here. And see, so you can actually be different values than in the flowers that you initially did. So that's an interesting thing, the way that you can kind of dance around. Still very much commas, though, if you see. Mm. It's still very much commas. Go ahead and add some of that there. So we're creating a, a little interest in these petals. I get red on there. So I'm going yellow and I'll go red and then I'll go into my quinacridone. Creating that second layer. Maybe go into my yellow. He's still drying. Okay, so there's a little, there's a, sometimes there's a strategy when you're painting. I don't know. We're that, we're in that day in acrylic April. This is where we are. We get here every year. <laughs> just were there some strategy it's somewhere okay so there's stages there's that first breakthrough in the 20 painting segment where you start to like have a little moment then there's another one again around the 50 painting segment 
And then there's a, a, a big relief at the uh, 100 painting segment. If you're trying to do a daily painting and you're like, what can I expect? It's a journey. <laughs> it really is, though. I'm just giving you some, some depth and dimension. Close that one up. And you can see how the layering of the petals is what puts one in front of the other. Let's add some more yellow here. And a little more yellow. Just pulling little strokes in. It's weird when you get used to it. First time you do it, it may not come naturally. Guess what? That's okay. Nobody said that every painting has to just come naturally and easily. The thing is, is that you're supposed to just have fun putting paint down on the canvas. In theory. In theory. In theory. It's a art theory. Two people got that joke. <laughs> oh, I would do that, but I just uh, would not want to be <laughs> angry letter from Matt Pat. <laughs> uh, you know, that's our thing that we invented. Just so you know. Just so you know. I'm continuing to uh, do that down, and that kind of just gives us a whole space. Now, Let's give this all a dry, a dry, a dry, a dry, and I'll show you a neat trick on the butterfly. So when I have the basic butterfly shape and everything is dry, I can come in with a chalk tool and kind of make sure that I know where the round wing is going to sit. And the reason is, is that when I do the white patterning in, I need to know where this wing is in this wing. I'm going to take my number four, Simply Simmons Round. I'm going to get it wet. I have clean water. That part is a big deal right now because um, I want to be able to lay down some very bright white. It doesn't have to be perfect on the black, but it's just nice to do that at this time. I'm going to pull down a little kind of drop shape. And then it's going to have another little drop shape friend to it. And then we kind of fit one in there and one, two, three, Ooh. one right there. I'm going to, there's one kind of center here. And I'm going to come on the back side a little bit longer. Notice that I'm letting black space be between these white spots. Yeah. Right. A lot of ways to do the patterning on a butterfly's body. Lots and lots and lots of ways. This is just a way, and it works pretty well. And you can always come back. You know what Almost I think? no difficulty with a black line and finish it out. I think your way is the best. My way is the best way. My way also includes a little bit of this fluid paint. Yes, it does. I'm going to pour some out. It's just because it's very creamy and highly pigmented. It's golden fluid acrylics, uh, titanium white. You could use craft paint if you don't want to buy the golden, and that would be okay. Though I highly recommend having a couple bottles of this stuff. I'm going to come here and make a few little dots, decorative little dots. Hmm. Yeah, those are fun, aren't they? Little dots along the wings. Couple there. 
and then a nice little row of dots. I could use a paint pen or a Posca pen. I get asked that a lot. Could I use a paint pen? Yes. Oftentimes, when you're seeing something done in art, there's five or six ways to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not one way. It's not one brush, one color, you know. You know, there's some things that are tough, like pretty tough to mix a good magenta. Much easier to buy that pigment, but you can make brown in almost any hue with primary colors if you have primaries. Just kind of letting that get there. And that's going to have a little sit. Uh, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, while I'm here, I'm also going to uh, put my stem in front again. So I'm going to take my red and a little bit of black. Thin it out and make sure my stem is sitting in front of these flowers. Now I'm going to put some flowers in front, but this only looks like this if I do this kind of, you know, work here. Mm. They have the nice curve to the flowers and they're sort of in the background. And then I can do some focal ones. Let's dry everything and come back and I'm going to show you the next step. Let's put some flowers in front now. And you're like, but wait, we just put some behind. And I'm like, I know, I know, but you got to have some that go in front so that they have that layering. Layers are what create the complexity. Layers are what create the complexity. And you want to have complexity in your work. I'm just using my number eight Filbert from Simply Simmons. I am again varying. the reds on here so I can have variety and I'm just making sure that things are a little layered flowers in back flowers in front might as well while we're here right rinse that out now a thing that I can do I can come in with a very light yellow orange even with a little of my fluid white paint in it and I can come here to this flower and kind of give it an edging Kind of catching the edge of those petals. You seen that? Yeah. Now these might edge right here. Very pretty. It's a pretty way to show like different little petals. You can come here and. I need to find this little one right here. Sometimes I add a little more yellow, so this changes a little bit through the scope. I'm just pulling the brush back and allowing the filaments to sort of lean out and you see the flowers kind of get created. It's really pretty there. And then this is another way where we can be like, oh, yeah, I can see how some are in front mm -hmm. and some are behind. Oof. All right. Then I'm going to continue to come here and, you know, edge each of these. Kind of close them up. And, and it just like, there they are. They just pop.
So I'm just going to keep coming through and, and finding these little edges. The edges aren't the last part of the story, but they certainly do help. I set the stage for it. Yeah. I love how this is coming together. Just making sure I've got that there. Now, one thing that we're going to do while we're here is thin up a little bit of our red. But I need it to be fairly pigmented. So I'm not going to thin it to watery. I'm going to thin it to creamy. I'm using my number one liner. And again, it's hard and I may have to put out some very fresh to really get it. There we go. These are very interesting little lines. And I think, looking at that, I'm going to put them in maybe at a later stage because I know I'm going to want to come in and Just white light. line some of the petals. And I may want the white lining to go nicely behind the stems. So sometimes you'll be, I'm just testing this right now. Where I'll be like, oh, how do I want that to be? And I'll be looking at it going, well, I would like that white lining to be a little more kind of untouched. So I definitely need to do it beforehand. That being said, let's call this a step since I'm kind of changing a direction here. <clears throat> and I'll do that in the correct order in the next step. Does it sound fantastic? It does. Okay. So I have these long stems that I'm going to want to put out and sort of falling down little, um, I don't, I don't know what, what these are, the pistols or I think that's what they're, that are all around this little plant. But to do that, I really have to do the lining now and I'm going to want to kind of line with a light yellow white. I'm using my number one monogram liner. Just kind of defining some of these little flowers that are here. And I just find a little edge and I follow it and how I follow it and layer it kind of builds the shape of the flower, doesn't it? Yeah. It says where the face is open, how the face is open. And also is going to give us a nice little structure to these. I haven't even put in their stems or little hang down bits, uh -huh. but I do think that I'm going to enjoy doing that later in the painting than sooner, like just for the effect. And sometimes you'll be working and you'll be like doing a thing and you're like, oh, this is going to be it. And then you're like, mm, it's not it. We talked about earlier, technique is something you can repeat. I don't want to know when it's a technique or a style. You can repeat it. <laughs> It's on command. It was really interesting in paint pouring. You could see when it stopped being 
just pouring and started becoming techniques, strategies, because you would see artists that were able to create consistent effects and, and predictably. Like they could say, oh, I'm going to do this now and I'm going to get this result. And they would do that and get that result. Like, well, that's definitely a technique. Mm. Not, not a random accident by any means. Mm. That lining really helps kind of edge those out. And this particular flower actually does sort of have this sort of creping mm. on it. So that sort of works really well. Um, to play with that a bit. Sometimes when you're painting, you'll be like, oh, I noticed that this cactus, it has spines. And these things are a characteristic of that plant, right? So playing with those spines then well, can do a very nice job of helping you, you know, make the feeling of that plant. It's a very interesting texture. Yeah. So we... Look at objects and go, what is, what is about this sunset? What is it about this rock? What is it about this butterfly that I can represent that will tell my brain, ooh, I've got a butterfly or mm. ooh, I got, you know, a flower. Again, this isn't pure white. This is a little kind of yellow white, which is why it's a little synergistic into the, the painting. Very synergistic. I use that correctly. I don't know. It's very synergizing. I've had kind of a, a really strange day today. Did you? I did. You know I did. You were here. You were here. Was I? I mean, who knows anymore? But yeah, I think so. <laughs> Was I? <laughs> Was I? Are you sure? Was I? Because it feels like maybe not. All right. That was a lot to do. We'll call that a step, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you what's next in creating this gorgeous piece. Let's butterfly up. Now, I'm going to get my orange first. I'm going to get my cad yellow and my cad red and make an orange. Right? Nice, bright orange. I'm using my number four round again, which is what I use to put in the spots. And on the forward wings, I need to make sure it's loaded well enough to paint. So if it's too wet, it won't have a nice pigment load to it, and that's what I'm watching for. Kind of a brighter orange. And then I can come up here and do kind of more of a yellow orange. I do want to paint these into the black. It's pretty easy to come around and reset the veins. It's hard sometimes to get the bright color. I'm going to get into my yellow orange. The back of this is much more to the yellow. But you can see that puts that little sucker in pretty fast, mm -hmm. pretty darn fast. I'm going to take my monogram liner, thin up a nice amount of black paint. And just make sure that I have good, you know, kind of definitions between things. And we just crisp up those edges. Mm. It can also kind of frill out the butterfly wings. Sometimes they have a little bit of a roughly little edge there. It's pretty fun, this. Very pretty. I'm liking that. I'm going to get just a little more yellow on my brush. Kind of come here into this wing and bright some of that yellow. See how we're doing? Mm. All right, let's look at it from overhead, see if it looks pretty good. 
Oh, wow. That's amazing. Isn't that nice? It's a nice piece. Okay. <clears throat> Let's call that the butterfly. The next thing we've got to do is put stems in and these, these pistols or stamens that are coming off. You guys can correct me in the comments below. And then I think we're at the end of the journey today. All right. So let's do the things. Okay. Okay. So I have to connect all these floating flowers to something. <laughs> I'm going to begin by using my monogram liner because I can make a thinner line and then I'll come back with my number four round if it's necessary. I'm going to take my black to my red. And I'm going to come here and bring a little stem kind of off the, and I'll bring this one down to the, so this is a bit more considered than some of the stuff we do. This one I'm going to bring, I'm going to come here and come right up there. See how that's kind of across. Mm -hmm. I don't want to whip through this too fast. I got to think about it. This is a thoughtful moment. <laughs> It's a good time to be thoughtful. Yeah. Connecting a few things up here and there. Just making little stem lines. They don't have to be perfect. They are pretty, pretty full though. Mm. You know, so I will be looking at that. You know. Making sure that there's sort of a weave. And we brought one there. I get a little close to my flower, I might need to come back with a little red and make sure that the stem stops where the stem should stop. So we've got those little stems in because we want those connected. So pretty. It is pretty. I like it. Not quite that red. Maybe a little kind of green gold here like we did earlier. Just a few places to... To give a little variance. Well, that's pretty good. And since I have my white lining in, guess what I can do now? Mm. I can do some of this more fluid stuff that's kind of coming off oh my goodness look at this purple over here i haven't used this whole time what was i doing preparing uh, it maybe maybe i'll use it right now this is actually a good solution now down here these will be kind of like a wiggle they're sort of interestingly deflated they are not upright everywhere the upright is not the common outcome. Little spots, there you go. Let's bring some of this around some places. No, I'm not justifying it. I'm putting it in because it's nice. It's a nice little variance. See how we go down? It's like a little, little more deflated. Mm-hmm. 
think that's that to me is very interesting. Where they're upright and where they're more downward bound. Mm -hmm. And I do actually like the purple and the magenta together because I think that they give us something besides black to work with, which is sort of nice. Just kind of putting that around somewhere. Those little weird bits going down. Now, for me, it was like really kind of a selling point, all this strangeness. Hmm. For some people, this will this will not feel like enjoyable. And it's okay to skip it. It's no one's gonna be like, You forgot the little bits. They're not. They're not gonna give you any hassle at all. You can say just make little tops of them where they like connect out there. I don't want to put too many on the butterfly. That's the dioxazine purple and the quinacridone magenta. Sometimes I put things in front of the little stems and sometimes I put it behind. And that also kind of helps the plant layer up. And then when you have kind of a a really beautiful mess really is what it is when you have a when you have a really really lovely little arrangement of things i love the crumpled bits that hmm. just works for me that they're like ah oh, and then they're like oh no maybe not <laughs> that's really fun Just touch up anywhere I want to. Maybe do some touch up on the butterfly. With my number one liner. I'm trying to say that more often because I get asked a lot, even though we write it in the description, even though we put it in the mini book, um, what brush I'm using. So I'm trying to uh, take that as like a, you know, like a, a hint to like say it more. So if I'm saying it too much, give me a hint. Well, I just really like that, John. I'm going to go ahead and come over here and give it a sign. There we go. Got a little signature. I got a little graphic flower with a butterfly. It's kind of a nice little almost end of the journey. Like we're heading downhill and heading towards that final, you know, week. <clears throat> Guys, this is amazing. We're getting there. We're coming uh, to the close of this. Maybe you just came to paint this one flower. Don't forget to take advantage of resources like the mini book and the traceable and the description because there's information in there. We timestamp these videos. Um, when we come back, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next. So here you are. You finished the painting. Uh, hopefully use the resources I aforementioned. 
uh, I like to see the results. So if you feel up for sharing it, I have an Acrylic April group. I have an Art Sherpa official group. And you can share Acrylic April in either group or both. Um, you can also share here on the Facebook page, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and even on TikTok. We have quite an awesome little group of Acrylic April people going through TikTok and Instagram. And, and a smaller family, our family on Twitter. Yeah. But still there. Still doing the thing. Um, I love that you guys appreciate the shorts. Don't forget to keep checking those peaks for upcoming videos because um, I think that's a great way for you to get a sense of what's coming and know if you want to kind of come in and invest in that painting project. You can just give it a quick look and you're like, you got a minute, right? Yeah. A minute to see what's next. So check the um, short videos that are coming up. There's just like a quick peek at future things. Maybe a tip. You never know. Um, I don't know. So how could you know? <laughs> Oh, so this is where we're at in the journey. John, I love you. I love you. Thank you for doing this with me. This has been a harder, it's been a better, but also harder year than other acrylic Aprils. And I, uh, I just really want to give John a hand for hanging in. It's, this has been behind the scenes. Y'all do not know. <laughs> we're having fun. Don't worry about us. We are having a good time. It's just, there's a lot to juggle and John does most of the juggling. <laughs> oh, no. All right, guys, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye!